Hello everyone, Blockchain for Humanity here again. Uh, today we are talking to Diana from Bali, Indonesia. She's a Bitcoin educator, co-founder of uh, Bitcoin Indonesia. They opened a Bitcoin house in Bali a few months ago, if I'm correct. And we just want to know everything about this project, about this uh, community, about this movement and all those people behind it. So Diana, it's a pleasure to have you here. How are you? Thank you very much. Yes, same same to you. Um, I'm very good, very excited for the interview and to share a little bit of what we are doing here in Indonesia. Nice. So uh, can you tell me please a little bit about uh, yourself, your story, what you were doing before, where are you from originally, what you were doing before and how did you get in the Bitcoin world? Yes. Uh, so originally I'm from Germany. I lived in Munich for a long time. I was deep into the fiat world, worked in management consultancy, working nonstop um, and late hours, and then always try to recover on the weekend to have energy again on Monday. And yeah, even though from the outside, it looked like I had everything, right? I had a nice job. I had a nice um, home, a car, everything that you need if you are stuck in the fiat world. But somehow I was not really happy and my boyfriend felt the same. So we we started to think, what is wrong with our society? What's wrong with the system? Why is everything getting more expensive? And why do we have to work more and more and still are not happy? And in 2017, my boyfriend introduced me for the first time to Bitcoin. And back then it was more like an investment for us. So we thought, yeah, Bitcoin is good to get rich and um, to have a better life. But the more we understood the, the system and how broken our money is and that the money is actually the reason why we are so sad and why the society is not, not happy anymore. Like everybody's just working nonstop and people are getting poorer and others are getting richer and the society is like separating so much. Um, and I was a lot of, a lot of concerned about environmental issues and other social issues. And somehow we found out that the money is the reason for all of the problems that we are having. And then we decided to, to leave everything behind to escape the German lifestyle and to quit our jobs, sell our house and car and everything that we had and um, started traveling around the world to see how other people are living and how Bitcoin is used in other countries in the world. And we've been to a lot of um, Asian countries, Southeast Asia, to Indonesia, to Thailand, to, to the Philippines. We've been to Boracay, the Bitcoin island. And we, I think then we really understood what Bitcoin is and that it's much more than an investment. It's mm -hmm. a freedom tool and it helps the people on so many levels um, and we wanted to get involved. So we never knew where our place is in Bitcoin, but we knew that we want to contribute and that we want to work on that. And somehow we found it here in Indonesia. Wow. Visionary people. Yes. <laughs> so, so, and uh, what's, the, what's the idea behind the Bitcoin Indonesia project? How did you, what was the driving force behind it? Yes. So it all started when um, we decided to move to Indonesia or to stay here in Bali. And because Bali is just our happy place, we feel home here, much more home than in Germany. And we found out that it's not allowed to use Bitcoin as a form of payment and that all other, other currencies besides Indonesian rupiah are illegal. So mm. you cannot pay in euro, you cannot pay in US dollar, you cannot pay in Bitcoin or anything else, just the Indonesian rupiah. And we were like, why? Like Bitcoin has so much potential here. People are suffering from so many things and Bitcoin is the solution. Why is the government so against it? So we said, maybe we should inform them about the benefits of Bitcoin. And we thought, okay, 
maybe just write a, let's write a one pager and then we send it to the government and then they will understand. And this one pager turned into a whole book and we've sent it to anyone that we can found online to the to all the different islands, to the central bank, to the to the government. Um, but the reaction was not very um, positive or not very successful. So then we got involved into the conference here in Bali, the um, Indonesia Bitcoin conference in 2023. And it was fun. We met so many great people and the conference was a big success. But then we thought, what's next? Like, how do we bring Bitcoin to the local people? I think conferences are amazing for those that already know about Bitcoin and mm. that like have some kind of knowledge, but it's not really attracting new people or the local communities. And then we teamed up with two friends and one Indonesian friend and one from Lithuania. And we said, okay, we, we have to educate the people. We have to make Bitcoin more accessible for the locals on a daily basis. And that was basically the, the idea behind Bitcoin Indonesia to educate it, to educate the locals and to have like a conference every day. So that's a, that is the reason for the Bitcoin house in Bali? And that was the, the reason for Bitcoin Indonesia, which is a non-profit initiative, which operates nationwide. And so we have more than 20 meetups now every month all over Indonesia where people can come and learn. We have our online education hub with lots of information and the Bitcoin house is one part of it um, to have a physical space where people can come and learn. Um, I always say it's a safe space because um, we have a no shoe, no shit coin policy and nice. uh, the, walls, <laughs> the walls are very secure. <laughs> um, yeah, and our... Our idea was that if you have a physical space, you somehow change the way people think about Bitcoin because suddenly there's a community and there are real people and it's fun and it's colorful and you can explore Bitcoin in real life and you can come and ask questions Um, just drop by and come inside and look at some books or rent out books see how a hardware wallet looks in real life because all these things are just known online but not really here in real life so we want to to make it yeah to bring it to to the people basically so and what is the response of the people how they uh, see the the bitcoin house and the community and and bitcoin in general in in indonesia mm. I would say it's very positive. So in the beginning, we were a little bit uncertain. Like, how do people react? Will they come to the Bitcoin house? Do they like it? Um, and it's very, very positive. People are very interested. And I think it's also a big symbol that it's Bitcoin only, which is very unusual here in Indonesia because of the, I would say, the wrong incentives trading and crypto trading is very popular and now there's the bitcoin house it's not the solana house it's not the crypto house it's just bitcoin and people really appreciate that we take the time to educate them for free they don't have to buy a course or do an investment or anything else they can just come and get what they what they need on a personal level and and do you have any educational program that you're using, or it's just uh, giving the talk, uh, doing meetups, or or you um, you are using some? Yes, so um, we run regular workshops on all different topics, on like Bitcoin for beginners, uh, what is self custody, how to buy Bitcoin, how to install your Lightning wallet, all of these kind of things, um. And then we also started teaching now my first Bitcoin. So we yeah, became uh... the live node um, of Indonesia. And we started in Bandung on Java Island, which is a different island um, in the beginning of this month. And then Bali will 
and the Bali cohort starts at the 28th, so in two weeks. And we are very excited to get started. That's very nice. And do you co collaborate in, uh, with any other communities around the world? Yes. And um, we're also part of the Plan B network. Um, Plan B. Which, yes. They, um, the network consists of like local uh, physical spaces like the Bitcoin house, for example, but then in all different regions so that we can um, help each other, learn from each other. And they are also um, having their online education page and we're currently translating it to Indonesian. So yeah, it's it's great to connect with other people. And we're in touch with many um, other circular economies. For example, Bitcoin Beach helped us a lot um, when we got started. Um, also, Amity Age was a very big inspiration for us. Um, great people, very, very supportive. Um, currently, we are in touch with Bitchala because we're starting our um, dev program in September. It's amazing to to see the collaboration all over the world. Like Bitcoin is borderless on so many levels. And I love how supportive everyone is. Like it's like a big, big family and everybody tries to help wherever they can. And it's so inspiring, really. Yeah, this is a really, really nice uh, to see. Uh, especially here in Latin America, we we saw that uh, from Bitcoin Beach, that was the first, uh, Bitcoin circular economy and after them was like Praia Bitcoin from Brazil, Bitcoin Lake from Guatemala, Bitcoin Jungle Costa Rica and so yeah. on so uh, and and Bitcoin Beach was helping all those communities so it's nice to see and know that uh, they also helping you in Indonesia yes. it's, it's just great so uh, can yeah. you tell me um, what's the current situation financial situation in, in, in Indonesia how and how Bitcoin can help Mm -hmm. in your it's, opinion God. yeah it's tough i would say um so inflation is quite high not officially of course but if you live here you see prices raise almost weekly um and what what's the biggest concern for me actually is the the situation of the unbanked people so mm. 77% of Indonesian people are unbanked or underbanked. And Indonesia is the fourth most populous country in the world. So we're talking about hundreds of million people that don't have access to the financial system. Um, and then the currency restrictions are very strong. As I mentioned, you're only allowed to use the Indonesian rupiah, no other currency. So you are somehow forced to use this inflationary money. Um, otherwise, you are threatened to go to prison. So it's wow. very severe. And I think for this is a, a big issue for freedom. And yeah, people try to ex escape the system sometimes by saving their money in gold. But then there are also a lot of scams. Uh, lately, it was announced that um, the government-owned gold seller, I would call it like that, sold like uh, 100 tons of fake gold. So people really suffer a lot and um, are very limited in their freedom. It's quite hard to send money outside of the country Banking fees are high. There are a lot of banking scams. Um, often the security system of the bank is very weak. So for hackers, it's a popular target to hack Indonesian banks and then take wow. all the savings of the people. Yeah, it's um, it's challenging, I would say. Um, and this is just the financial, financial side. Um, I mean, there's also a lot of corruption. Um, some human rights violations, a lot of censorship, a lot of privacy issues. So I believe Bitcoin can help here on in a lot of areas of life and improve lives of the people. 
in many levels. So it's very important the the work that you are doing there. It's it's very important to have people that can show them what the Bitcoin is about. It's not only the money and uh, the speculation about the price, and but it's uh, very very much behind and uh, about the freedom and uh, financial freedom, especially. So uh, can you yeah. tell any differences uh, between how the how the people from Indonesia see Bitcoin against uh, how the people from Europe see the Bitcoin? Yes. Um, so I think there's a huge difference between the global South in general. I think we face a lot of similar issues in the global South compared to the Western countries. I mean, in the Western world, almost everyone has a bank account. We all have access to the financial system. We are very privileged from a financial perspective. Um, and most of the people see Bitcoin as a very risky investment. It's so <laughs> stupid. But yeah, um, this is how it's it's seen. And there's no other use case. It's just a very, very risky investment. Um, and then you come here to, to the Global South or to Indonesia, and then you see it's much more than that. And it's not risky at all. It's like the safest way to save your money. Um, and yes, as I said, it's it's a freedom tool and it's a way to protect your purchasing power, to protect your wealth, to save money for the future and for future generations. I know a lot of people that if we like sometimes when we introduce Bitcoin to the local people here, they get very emotional because suddenly they have a bank account for their first time in their life and they are able to send money to a different island. I mean, Indonesia consists of more than 17,000 islands. So it's not easy to, to send money if you don't have a bank account. Um, or like families that lost all of their savings in a, in a scam and then suddenly find hope again for their future and for their children. It's so different than what we are used to in in Germany. Yeah, it's very different. Yeah, I, I can see it also here in Latin America. The, it's just a necessity to yes to to have a Bitcoin and understand the Bitcoin what the, what it yes. means uh, especially. So, uh, what are the plans future plans for Bitcoin Indonesia? Um. So. Our plans are to educate as many people as possible um, and give everyone the opportunity to learn about Bitcoin um, in their native language. Um, so we have a lot of educational initiatives planned. We are now starting this development program to also have some local developers, which I believe is also important if you have local problems then you have lo you need to have local developers to solve these local problems um, and we are building a closed loop system which is kind of a circular economy but it's ha it has a different legal framework i would say like this so it's like i always compare it to starbucks points so mm. everybody who's part of our community, part of our closed loop system is allowed to redeem Bitcoin within that system. And by that, we are trying to showcase the benefits of Bitcoin usage on a daily basis and also try to shape the legal framework to make it more, to make it easier in the future to use Bitcoin on a daily basis. So our goal is to make Bitcoin legal again here in Indonesia, by just giving a positive example and educating um, people, businesses, maybe also the government. And yeah, just making it easier for everyone to use Bitcoin and to have a better life. Oh, that's fantastic. So uh, last question I have for you, uh, Diana, is... Uh asking everybody on this podcast what bitcoin mean to you personally wow that's a big question um i would say bitcoin completely changed my life it changed 
my personality and it helped me to to find to my true self I would say and it gives me hope and inner peace I can sleep well at night because I know I have bitcoin um, and I would wow. be very very sad if there if bitcoin wasn't there because then I would only see the problems but with bitcoin we have the solution for all of these problems and it's so inspiring to see everyone working on bitcoin working together on bitcoin and working on the future that makes life better so it's it's a lifestyle somehow yeah i think bitcoin teaches you so many things and changes you on so many levels and i want to inspire other people to to feel the same and to explore the same ways great answer Thank you very much, uh, Diana, for this interview. Thank you. It was a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to have you here. And uh, best of luck for uh, all those goals that you have for the future. Thank you very much. Thank again. you so much. Likewise. Thank you.